Welcome to SolidWorks Central. Today, we're creating a realistic honeycomb mesh grill, bold, detailed, and built for real world use. We'll walk through powerful tools like fit spline, extruded boss base, fill pattern, offset surface, deform, shell, move face, fillet, chamfer, extruded cut, and thicken, step by step. And to top it off, we'll customize the materials and finishes for a professional polished look. Let's dive in. First, let's open a sketch on the top plane. Let's select the center rectangle command and draw our rectangle with its center at the origin. Let's grab our smart dimension command. We'll start by setting this edge length to 120 millimeters. The next dimension we need is 60 millimeters. Now, let's go into the sketch filler command. We'll set the fillet radius to 20 millimeters and apply it to the appropriate corners. Next, we can select the fit spline command from the search bar. The fit spline command allows us to merge several individual sketch lines or arcs into one continuous editable curve. We'll drag the tolerance slider to its lowest value. Then we'll select the midpoint line tool and we'll set the line for construction. Now, let's use the make curves equal length relation to make our midpoint line and the fit spline curve equal in length. With that done, let's go into the extruded boss base command. We'll set the depth to 60 millimeters. And for the direction, we'll select mid plane. Next, we'll open another sketch on the top plane. We also need to make our previous sketch visible. Then, let's go normal to the sketch. We'll use the Convert Entities command. This tool lets us quickly project existing edges from our part onto our sketch. Select the construction line and project it onto our new sketch. Now, Let's go into the extruded boss base command one more time. In the thin feature section, we'll set the thickness value to two millimeters. The direction and depth are already set to mid plane and 60 millimeters, so we can proceed without changing anything. We'll uncheck the merge result box so we can create a separate body. After that, we can hide the sketch we made visible. Let's right click on this part and select Isolate. Isolate is a great tool that temporarily hides all other parts, letting us focus on just the selected one. Now, it's time to start creating our honeycomb pattern on this part. We'll click the arrow under Linear Pattern and select the Fill Pattern command. We'll select our surface as the fill boundary. For the pattern direction, we'll select this edge here. We'll check the Create Seed Cut box. Next, we'll select the Polygon tool. We'll set the number of sides to 6. We'll set the outer radius to 2 millimeters. We'll set the instant spacing to 4.5 millimeters and we'll set the stagger angle to 30 degrees. That looks great. Click OK to complete it.
From the Surfaces tab, we'll go into the Offset Surface command. Now, we'll select the surface we want to offset. We'll set the offset distance to 0 mm. We can now exit Isolate. We'll hide this part now, which will leave only the surface we offset visible. This will allow us to use the Deform tool more effectively. We'll find the Deform tool using the search bar. The Deform type will be Curve to Curve. For initial curves, we will select the edge of our patterned surface. For target curves, we'll select the edge of the part we want to deform. To ensure the deform is applied more consistently, check the Uniform box. Increase the shape accuracy all the way to the maximum. We'll also activate the Curve Direction option. Now, let's isolate this part. Let's go into the Shell command. For the shell, we'll set the thickness to 5 mm. Now, we'll select our surface. To see a preview, we will activate Show Preview. Again from the search bar, we will access our move face command this time. The offset option will be selected. Now, let's select our surfaces. We'll set the distance to 3 mm. To deactivate our operation, we'll move the rollback bar up one command. Now, we will open a sketch on the top plane. Go normal to the sketch. Next, we'll go into the Convert Entities command and select the geometry we want to project. To reactivate the operation we turned off, we will drag the rollback bar back down below it. From the Features tab, let's go into the Extruded Cut command. We'll now select the curve we projected. We'll activate the Thin Feature option. Make sure to turn off Direction 2. For Direction 1, set the option to Mid Plane. In the Thin Feature section, let's set the direction to Mid Plane. For the Thin Feature, we'll enter a thickness value of 0.65 mm. Let's do one final check of our values and then we can apply the cut operation. This time, we'll deactivate the cut operation. Now let's go into the fillet command. We'll set the radius to 5 mm. We'll select the edges we want to apply the fillet to. Now. Let's go into the chamfer command. We'll set the type to angle distance with a distance of 1 mm and an angle of 45 degrees and apply it to the relevant edges. We can now reactivate the cut operation we had deactivated.
Now we can exit Isolate. And now for a great step, we'll use the Thicken command from the Surfaces tab. The Thicken command turns a surface into a solid body by adding a specified thickness. We'll select the surface we want to thicken. We'll set the thickness to 0.25 millimeters. Here, we'll also uncheck Merge Result to create a separate body. This process might take a little while to complete, so please be patient. Our model is ready, it just needs some finishing touches. Let's quickly add those together. Thanks for watching, and that's our honeycomb mesh grill complete. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. We've seen how to combine multiple SolidWorks tools. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll be back this Thursday for our next video in the exercise series, so I hope to see you there. Until then, keep designing and keep learning.